Hello, Keller Williams Stockton. It's Emran, your team leader. I'm excited to bring you this message. I thought I would check in with you and let you know a little bit about of a recap of this week and what's coming for next week. So, got my notes here, and I expect this video to be no longer than about six to eight minutes. So, I hope you tune in, put everything away, turn your phone off, take some notes, and be ready to get some information here. So, let's talk a little bit about Telephone Tuesday and a recap of what happened. We passed out scripts for short sales. However, a lot of us did not have the phone numbers that come with each short sale pack that was given to you. I wanted to let you know that I did a lot of research this week and our friend Jeff Lee was able to point me in the right direction with a company called CoreLogic. And CoreLogic provides us the information needed for us to contact these potential short sales or distressed sellers and give us their contact information. The cost on this program is six cents per lead. Six cents per lead, and there's no minimum, so you could buy one or you could buy a million. Um, with it being six cents per lead, it's very affordable for all of us to be able to focus on our business via distressed sellers and contact them direct and use some of the scripts that were handed to us on Tuesday. Uh, what we did learn on the scripts from Tuesday was that we need to come from curiosity and not from judgment. I think a lot of realtors in today's market are trying to come from judgment and saying, hey, you didn't pay, it's your last chance. And really, that's not what we're looking for. As I told you on Tuesday, when I talked to my friend who's a distressed seller, she's dealing with emotions that say, I feel terrible about what's going on with me. And the last thing that she needed was a scolding from a realtor. I think if we come from curiosity and we ask the right questions, we can earn trust and then eventually lead to either helping them with a loan modification or listing their home. So that's really important to come from curiosity rather than from judgment. And I think that not only just for distressed sellers, but I'm talking about for everybody, whether it's another realtor you're talking to, whether it's a potential buyer, always come from curiosity rather than from judgment and I think you'll be in much better shape. So let's talk a little bit about the calls that you did make, which were your sphere of influence calls. Um, we're looking at Telephone Tuesday's results, 90 minutes, 14 referrals, and 9 appointments. Now that's down from last week, but you got to remember this is your second week moving into the sphere of influence calls. So that's okay. This is a great number, and I'm excited about it. A success story for those of you that may not know, Brian uh, Simmerman made a phone call to his sphere of influence, a previous client. He happened to catch the client in a time in their life where they wanted to get rid of all their properties. He has an appointment to list five, one, two, three, four, five, five apartment complexes. That's an incredible number. 77 units, five apartment complexes. Was it worth the call? I don't know, you asked Brian. At any rate, what I'm getting at was calling your sphere of influence on a regular basis. You never know when you're gonna catch them at what time in their life. Just because it's a no today, doesn't mean it's a no forever, it's just a not yet. So be sure to always keep checking in with your sphere of influence on a regular basis. Speaking of that, we talked about how do we get another phone call in without seeming pushy. We talked a little bit about that. And the way that we do that is what we ask for permission for a future phone call. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm sorry to bother you. I was just wondering if you were ready to sell your house. No, not yet. Okay, great. Is it okay? May I have your permission to call you in about three weeks just to check and see how everything's going and if things have changed? And most of the time they'll say yes. If they say no, no big deal. If they say yes, put it on your calendar and then schedule a time to call them three weeks from today. Talking about the calling. Um, today is Friday and I'm sorry that I'm in jeans. It's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a relaxed Friday and I thought I would give you uh, some a tip that came from yesterday's quantum leap class and one of the tips that we learned yesterday right from the beginning was that Dick Dillingham the, the instructor asked us to make a phone call to one of the people um, that we love maybe it's your wife your husband your spouse your boyfriend girlfriend your family member your mom your dad a business partner a past client and the purpose of the phone call was just to say hey I appreciate you and I just wanted to say hi and that I was thinking about you. The phone call's purpose to make somebody's day. 
And often what we found out was that when we made somebody's day, it made our day too. So what I'd like to do, and I've talked to Wanda about this, is that every Telephone Tuesday, before you start making your phone calls, that you're going to call one of your friends, your family members, a past client, a business relationship, and you're going to say, hey, I was just thinking about you. I thought I would give you a call. And with that phone call and that response that you're going to get back from them, that'll set your mood in a different way than you would if you just started picking up a phone call and calling for business. So I'd like that to be, be a starting point for us on Tuesdays. All right, so let's talk about Debbie Burness's class, an excellent class that she did. Debbie, if you're watching this, thank you very much. You did a fantastic job. You can tell that Debbie has been training and being coached, and she's taken a lot of time in her presentation style, and she did a great job. She tried to fit four hours worth of class into an hour and 30 minutes, and she did it perfectly. Don't forget that Debbie will be having a class on Monday regarding accountability and affirmations. That will be Monday following the team meeting, which is from 9.30 to 10.30, and then Debbie's class will be from 10.30 to 11.30 or 11.45 is I think what Debbie said. So she talked about the accountability and finding an accountability partner that's going to really hold you accountable. Not somebody that's going to say, hey, did you lead generate today? And you say, no, I didn't get to it. And then they would say, oh, that's okay. Just make up for it. No, you need an accountability partner that's going to hold you accountable. That's the purpose of an accountability partner. And the accountability part partner for me on a lot of what I've been working on with you guys has been Wanda. And I'll tell you what, she does not let me slide. And I really appreciate that. And it's hard to sit there and take criticism from somebody. But as long as you know it's constructive criticism like Wanda's doing for me, it's a totally different story. So she sits there and she goes, Emery, you need to do this, this, this. And I said, well, I didn't do this. And she goes, well, why didn't you do that? And while it is hard to swallow, it's the truth. And sometimes we need that. And I'm very happy to have an accountability partner that's holding me accountable. So find whoever that accountability partner is for you. Not somebody that's going to let you slide, but somebody that's going to say, why are you not doing what to do? How can we help you? How can we time block to make sure that these things don't happen again? These are the exact types of accountability partners that you want. Also, Debbie talked about it. If it's not on your calendar, it doesn't exist. So make sure that when you're putting your goals down, that you put down a specific time as to when you plan on accomplishing these goals. So if you say, I want to make $100,000, and you go, okay, that's great. By when? Uh, whenever. That's not really a goal because the goal is infinite, and there's no, there's no sense of urgency for it to happen. I think it's important to always put it on your calendar as to when you plan on having that goal achieved. I'll give you a great example. Wanda called me and she said to me, Emron, I'm really committed to going to Mega Camp. However, I don't know if it's in my financial picture right now. How do I get immediate business in order to get to Mega Camp? And I said, Well, what's your goal? She said, I'd like to have an escrow in, excuse me, a, a buyer in escrow no later than September 1st. Well, today's the 20th. That means that there's only 11 days between now and then. So I said to Wanda, what's the most immediate way that you can get business? And she says, cash buyer. I said, correct. And at what price range? And she said, I don't know. I said, the lowest end. The lowest end buyer, uh, the lowest end price range will find you the buyer that you're looking for. So she says, well, I don't have any listings. And I said, Wanda, go to the board. Go to the listing board. We've got nearly 70 listings downstairs on the wall. I know, I looked at myself, I saw eight listings under 100,000. So all you do is go to that listing agent and say, excuse me, listing agent, I was wondering, may I use your, um, may I use your property for an ad that we're doing? And we're KW, we share, absolutely. Or at least that's what I hope that they'll say. Absolutely, and what you do is you take your your potential listing that's under 100,000, you advertise the heck out of it saying that you're looking for cash buyers and I can't guarantee it, but I'm pretty confident that it's gonna be a lot of calls coming your way. That's how I built a lot of my relationships with investors. Finding a property that connects you to that potential investor that's looking to spend money ASAP. And there's a lot of people with cash right now. I think that's the best way to go. So Wanda said, what a great tip. 
I'm giving that to you. So that's your Friday tip. 